need all types of housing, single family homes, rental housing as people start out, first time home buyers, places for seniors. We need supportive housing for people with special needs. We need housing for the homeless. And our agency has adopted building for everyone as a simple construct that everyone deserves housing and we're gonna work to build that housing for a variety of populations, for everyone. No one is excluded in that construct. RUPCO was actually started as a program by Ulster County Community Action Agency who uh, saw the opportunity, applied, received some funding to start a rural preservation program and about one year later we rolled out as our own not-for-profit organization. The malls had uh, depleted most of the major retailers. IBM was in the process of downsizing. The Fair Street area was pretty much vacant. The Stuyvesant Hotel had fallen into extreme disrepair and uh, Rupco received tax credits and other grants to renovate and restore it to its original configuration. I started with Gateway Industries. And in 1980, we had some community residences for the disabled but we didn't have any transitional housing. We didn't have apartments for them at that time. I contacted Rupko and said, uh, is there any way we could work together as two agencies in this community to really help people find housing? We looked at the Stuyvesant together. We got about a million dollars for, for the project. Our ability to be impactful has evolved over time and it comes through setting out to do something, actually doing it and getting it done. Early on, I think the accomplishment of this, redoing the Stuyvesant Hotel changed people's minds about who and what Rupco was. I credit, and I think rightly so, the Stuyvesant as a turning point in causing the private sector to come back and reinvest. The result is what you see today. Let me tell you that they got from there to here by some great people that were hired. I'm proud that in my tenure on the board to hire Kevin O'Connor. Now that's my claim to fame, okay, so to speak. Well, when I started in 2002 with uh, Rupco, we were a staff of about 15. So we've grown from a staff of 15 to a staff of 70 plus in the last uh, 20 years or so. We've been able to bring on staff with a high level of expertise to really help us to uh, navigate the world of government funding, the various types of um, technologies involved in housing. I think it was in the mid-90s that I learned that the average net worth of renters in this country was $4,000, and the average net worth of homeowners was $115,000. The Home Ownership Center was something that was brought to us from NeighborWorks America. We've celebrated well over helping 1,000 folks buy their first home here in Ulster County. We were looking. We didn't think we were going to get like any grants and stuff like that. The process was just great. Everybody was just so helpful. Everything that has to do with acquiring a home, they were very knowledgeable, knowledgeable to help us. We've employed uh, local contractors for decades now to make home repairs using government grant sources for low-income homeowners, uh, senior homeowners, to help people to stay in their home and to make improvements to protect their investment. This is your foundation and I'm very appreciative for what they've done to help me to achieve my goals. Stock Commons 
was a 10-year saga to create uh, really the first intergenerational affordable housing campus in New York State that housed both seniors and families on the same campus. Despite years of some stiff opposition, we were able to get that done. When I became board chair, the first major project uh, we took on was Woodstock Commons. The town of Woodstock actually reached out to Repco and asked them to come create some a workforce and affordable housing for the town. And Ten years later, we got approvals and built the Woodstock Commons. And what a wonderful project that is. It's intergenerational. There are longtime Woodstock residents, people that were semi-homeless that now have a place to live. There are seniors there, there are kids there, there are kids waiting for the bus in the morning. It's really an awesome project and uh, we did persevere and get it done. I cannot say how grateful I am for that housing. It, it's spectacular, it's beautiful. The, my favorite thing is that when we feel chilly, I walk over and press a button and the heat goes on. <laughs>
Energy Square is an incredibly important project for HCR. It represents for us two important things, both opportunity for the residents who get to live here, for the uh, homeless youth who will have an opportunity to uh, get a roof over their head and a stable place to live, and also sustainability, right? The first net zero project in the Hudson Valley and the incredible opportunity that a sustainable, incredibly energy efficient building like this provides, it's a home run. These support the economy by creating local jobs, increasing the tax base, but that is just the start. With Energy Square, we will provide 57 mixed use housing units that create space that is both for those who need an affordable home and for those with more disposable income to support the economy. We're all working together to provide as much as we can for the community. Arts, education, culture, technology, housing, and it's net zero. This is what the future, this is what 21st century creativity is about. Our ability to move forward, to deliver some well-designed, affordable housing has opened the door to just about all the communities in the Hudson Valley. Summer 2019, I followed the official procedures and applied and put my name into the lottery. In January 2020, I received a phone call that I got space in the apartment building. When I came here for the first time, it was a really wonderful moment of bliss and gratefulness. We affiliated with RDAC, the Orange County Rural Development Action Council, in 2015. They were a smaller nonprofit. We were able to keep the resource of RDAC uh, for Orange County, blend the two organizations together. It's been a great marriage. There may be some other opportunities for us to merge with some other smaller nonprofits in the region. It gave Rupco the opportunity to expand its geographical footprint into Orange County, which then has now also allowed both our organizations to expand our footprint into Sullivan County. I see our collaboration continuing to grow. What I really love is that who knows what I'm going to be doing every day, but at the end of the day, I'm going to be helping people with their home. I came on the board because I, I believed in what Rupco was doing. I so enjoyed working with Kevin O'Connor and the staff for the next 10 years. As a board member, we saw a lot of projects through from, from vision to completion. The bottom line is they put together a great team, not just the administrative team. I'm talking about support staff. You could have a great administrative team, but if you don't have the support of your staff in the community that's helping people, you're not going to make it. The staff is clearly our most important asset. We have a lot of housing resources that were entrusted by the government to deliver to people. It's our staff on a day-to-day -day basis that have uh, gone the extra mile to become certified and trained in various programs, whether it's housing inspection or how to deliver the housing voucher choice program or how to uh, oversee construction or properly lease up or do housing counseling, help people buy a home. It's a staff that cares. It's a staff that has been trained, that's very knowledgeable. We worked through COVID to uh, continue to deliver housing and uh, that only happened because of our staff and their ability to really care about the work that they do here at Repco, providing housing and opportunity uh, for everyone. <music>